Hey fellow backyard boyers, Nick here. Now today I'm going to be making a 40 pound PVC bow without a flattening jig. Let's get started. For today's bow I'm going to be using a new heat gun. This was sent to me by Tack Life and they wanted me to review it and see what I thought so today I'm going to be using this heat gun and I'm also going to be using it, trying it out, putting it through its paces and once I've got a pretty good idea of how it runs and how it is. I'll give you guys a full review and let you guys know what I think of it. All right, let's open this up and then we can get started. So it comes with various attachments. I'll take a look at these. Not sure if we're going to use any of these today. Structure manual. Here's the heat gun itself. I'm excited to see how this heat gun does. You know, it does seem a little cheap just because of how light it is and that everything's made out of plastic, even these side bumpers, which are usually an overmolded rubber, are plastic on this one. But we'll see how it performs, especially next to the Porter Cable heat gun, because both of them are pretty much in the same price range. So here I have some 3 quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipes. These were all picked up from the hardware store and I'm going to be testing them to see if they're tough enough to be made into a bow. Hopefully at least one of these will work. So I'm just covering it in a little bit of cloth just so the pieces don't get everywhere. If it does explode... Yep, okay. That one fails. This is still a fail. Right, last one. Okay, perfect. So I've cut my pipe down to 48 inches. I've marked the center at 24, two inches out from that for my handle and then six inches in from either end for the recurved tips. First thing I'm going to do is start working on my mid limbs. That's usually where I start work on a bow like this. And I'm going to do that by heating up between this end of the handle mark at two inches till roughly the end. We'll see how this end turns out. But here we go. So now I'm just going to take a towel and start pressing from the handle mark down to the end. You just keep pushing and just feel where it's starting to cool down. In the spots where it's starting to cool down, you want to press a little harder. And you're trying to get a sort of a taper but you actually want this to taper down into the mid limb and then out to the tip as opposed to from a straight taper from the handle. Okay. Now since there's not as much room for error in these bows as a tapered one because with the tapered bow you have a consistent taper to follow so I like to give the bow just a little bit of deflex, a little more than normal, just to help with any issues like that. Okay, so now that I have that limb, I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing as the other side. I'm just going to go from there and press down to the end. Or not to the end, but to the six inch mark on this side. Okay, so just like the other one, I'm going to add a touch of deflex, 
Now that my limb tapers are roughed in, I'm going to go back and heat up the handle, make sure everything lines up through the handle, and also squish the handle sideways so that it's a little narrower and it's a little thicker and stiffer. This will help eliminate some hand shock and it will also reduce Archer's Paradox. So now that it's soft and flexible, I'm just going to start squishing the handle in. And while I do that, I'm going to make sure that it's lined up through the lens. Okay, so here's the handle after shaping. You can see it's a little thinner this way. It's got a nice place to grip. Nice and balanced in the handle. Alright, so now I'm going to start working on the tips. So now I'm going to heat up the tip. I'm going to be doing some recurving down here. So I'm going to start by heating up down here. We're going to do some recurving. And then we're going to heat up this section up here and do some secondary shaping. And before I get started, I'm just going to make a mark at 3 inches so I know where to make that transition. Take this, kind of press down from the sides. So what I'm trying to do here is squeeze in from the side so that there's strength at this angle. And make sure it lines up with everything else. Now, I don't want this to be too hard of an angle, so I'm going to round it out a bit. Okay, so I'm doing about five inches of reflex on this. You can see about five inches from this base. So now I'm going to heat this up and work on the tip. Okay, so now I'm just going to press down with this towel. And while I press down, I'm going to maintain the shape that I had. I'm going to press it to about half an inch thick at the very end. I want there to be sort of a double curve here. You can see that, that initial curve, and then I'm going to bring this in a little bit more. So now I'm going to heat up the back of this, and using these locking pliers, I'm going to pinch from about half an inch from the end to this three inch mark and that's going to create our tip. So now you can see I've got the tip and I'm just going to let this cool. But while it's cooling I just need to make sure that everything lines up and that this isn't warped. Here's the tip after shaping. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other side. Once I'm done with that, we're going to go cut this, sand it smooth, and then cut the knox. Alright, so now I've got a file, and I'm going to be making my knock about a half inch from the end here. And just make sure I go straight across, and then I'm going to start by going down about an eighth of an inch deeper than the thickness of the file. So now you can see the tip. I'm just going to bring this in, clean it out, make sure that the edges aren't sharp. This is just a little bit of sandpaper to clean this out. And then Move on to the other side. Now that both of my knocks are finished, I'm going to string this bow up for the first time. So I've got some paracord as a temporary string. 
figure out how long of a loop I want. I want it to be about that long. So let's tie a knot. Just a simple overhand knot. Just adjust it. That's about what I want. Measure it up. Perfect. So now I go to the other side. Measure approximately four inches on the string. Then I tie my new loop using the other loop as a guide. Tie both the same. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to place the string in the loop. Bring it to the other side. Step through, make sure everything's lined up. Make sure that my knee is in the middle of the bow, not on either limb. Alright, now here's the bow all strung up. You can see that it looks pretty even. Now, I can see here that there's a little bit more bending this way than I'd like. You can see this limb is very nice. The bend is mostly right in here, right where I want it to be. This is a little close to the handle, but it's not a big deal. I would still say that this is a good bow, but it does need to be trained a little bit. And by that, you just need to take the limbs and just bend this limb a little more. And you want to do this while you're breaking the bow in. And usually I consider breaking in a bow to be within the first hundred or so shots. So when you're shooting this bow out for the first time, just keep that in mind and just push onto the limb, get it to bend a little bit more. You can see the flex has actually changed a little bit. It's fixed itself a little bit. And that's what's really nice about PVC. All right, here it is. Feels good. Let's put a few arrows through. Snappy little bow. Okay, now that I've put about 30 arrows through this bow, I'm going to weigh it, and this should be fairly indicative of what it's going to be once it fully settles down. So I've got a 29 inch arrow on here, so I'm going to draw till an inch from the point, and we'll take our reading. Right, right about there. And we're at about 43 pounds. So I'd say that this bow is probably going to drop to about 40, 41 pounds once it's fully broken in. All right, here it is. Once I've gone ahead and shot this bow out completely, I'm going to finish it up. But until then, I hope you enjoyed building this bow along with me today. If you have any suggestions for other types of bows you'd like to see me do, or any other things you'd like to see me build, please let me know in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing, be sure to check out my channel for other videos like this. I've also written several books on different subjects, and I'll put a link to those in the description below. And it would also be a huge help if you supported the channel on Patreon. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Or you can wait till the end of this video. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!